Because through the critical discussion about European history, you realize that Europe is not something enforced upon us, but a request of ourselves means trade unions, social movements, socialist movements. And if that is the case, then the present uh, things we do not like that much in Europe can be changed as well. I think what we need mostly right now is a critical discussion on the European present, but any discussion on the present will necessarily uh, depend on some re-evaluation of the past. Uh, let's say, let's take the issue of the uh, new fascism. Or... Ideally function as a sort of antidote to the rise of populism, and populism, and I would say all populist movements, have a strong nationalist core and as such are forces um, working for a disintegration of Europe and in particular the EU. Instead of uh, this dubious Cold War framework of uh, totalitarianism, we have um, we have uh, the vocabulary, we have the experience, we have the knowledge. We've been there, we've been in fascism. The contemporary rise of fascism is not so new. And uh, I think we can fall back on our um, experience in fighting the uh, first fascism. Uh, first, we need to call it this, not totalitarianism, which, is, which has a strong anti-communist dent, which makes it impossible for us to understand why the Soviet Union took the pain to defeat the Nazis, right? Um, so instead we can fall back on our Euro very European tradition of anti-fascism from the interwar period and also post-war. And uh, that, would be, that would be perfectly enough for us to combat the challenge. Um, I probably would um, stress more this experience of colonialism, which of course pertains not to all EU member states, but to quite a number. And that's why we need to, uh, when we speak critically about, uh, let's say, issues of, uh, of far-right violence, it's impossible to understand this violence without going back to the, to the imperial and colonial uh, periods and European racism, the history of European racism too. Not each, but many in, in Europe have a colonial past, but that is sort of exclusively part of their national history. It is not a transnational feature. Um, uh, in my perception as a historian, of course, it is a transnational feature. And, uh, and I think that could be stressed in the, in the exhibition. Yeah, that is that Europe is a result of revolutionary democratic movements starting right in the 19th century with workers crossing all borders cooperating and particularly then in the 1920s when Europe was one of the main requests of socialist parties, trade unions, peace movement, women's movement reflecting itself in many Congress resolutions in favor of building the United States of Europe but Europe was discussed also at local level and socialist trade unions started to cooperate practically building a socialist Europe, a trade union, a people's Europe from the bottom. That I would very much like to be remembered maybe more than it is in the moment in the museum.